watching Kenosha Community Television. Well, hey, Jason, for me, either he wants to say something or eat something, one of the two. Take the opportunity to put our musical uh, interest. Acting, in. dancing, and now singing a Grammy award. Laura Kaplan. And uh, in particularly Night Shift and, and, and Gum Home. Really? Never knew that. Okay, here we are in downtown Kenosha once again our, for our annual cruise in uh, with none other than Tony Pontillo. Tony, uh, well, let's hear a little bit about today. Uh, what's going on? Well, today we started at 4.30. People were starting to flock in. Um, tried to kick them out, but it, I gave up. So at 9 o'clock, we had all 600 dash plaques gone. And as about an hour ago, our total count with a clicker was 1,056 cars. Plus, there's probably hundreds that snuck in around the back area through the course of the day, you know. But it's been the best the best we've ever had this year. And there are cars from all over. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there, there's cars are all over and uh, from five different states. And a group of guys, there's 13 cars that came across. I, I didn't talk to them, but some of the people at the entrance did. They came across from Michigan on the ferry because they heard about the car show. This, this car show is known all around the Midwest nowadays, you know. It's uh, always bigger and better. You got, what, bands and some businesses involved? Yeah, we got bands, Elvis, and uh, we got, on this, on the, by Trolley Dogs, we got 50 um, bands from the 1970s. That was the big thing in the 70s with the fancy bands. They came in today. Uh, a lot of the car dealers are here, the new car dealers. Yeah, it's a, it's a good time for everybody, and what's nice about it, everybody is friendly with each other. Um, no jealousy or nothing. Everybody's here to work together and have a good time, and that's what counts. It's a great America's pastime seeing a lot of these old cars. Yeah, yeah. And the, the biggest thing we have to talk about is that this is actually a fundraiser as well. Don't you donate the funds to charity? Yeah, to the police department. We also donate for, um, um, to the good fellows we've donated to with the breast catch society they have a trailer here and we help them out and they buy, pro, buy produce with it and they sell the, sell it there uh television army on the, on the entrance uh, we have people drop off food for them and they'll be back about four o'clock to pick up all the containers and we try to help the community out we whatever money's left after we pay all our bills we give away and if anybody want more information about the Midwest Street uh, Association or uh, the car show in general, is there a Facebook or website or a phone number? Yeah, we're on uh, this MidwestStreetMachine.com, Kenosha. Um, great. Well, Tony, once again, excellent turnout here today. It's always great weather, and thanks so much for putting on a great event. Well, thank you for coming, you guys. Enjoy yourselves. Okay, here we are at the car show in downtown Kenosha, and I'm with your name. Uh, my name is James Haas. James, what a great car you have here. Uh, what is this car? This is a 1952 Chevrolet four-door deluxe sedan. My grandfather bought it new in June of 1952. Um, and what's so special about this car? Well, it's about a two-minute uh, little bit of uh, get-together, but here it is. My grandfather was born in 1884 in Vienna, Austria. He was a son of a baker. He was an engineer and apprentice at Mercedes-Benz in Stuttgart, Germany in the late 1890s. He was uh, also um, a race car driver. He started racing in France in 1897. He came here in 1903 to work for John Jacob Astor, who went down on the Titanic. He was the wealthiest man on the Titanic. He was brought here to build Astor race cars. Joe drove also in the first Indy 500, May 30, 1911. He's in a history book, Joe Jagersberger. And he lost a leg and an eye, unfortunately, about six months later in uh, South Carolina, in Columbia ended his racing career. Then, since he could no longer race, he went into the automotive business. So in 1914, he started a company in Racine called Ray Joe, which was short for Racine Joe, who my son is named after. In 1918, my grandfather designed, marketed, and sold all over the world a performance overhead valve conversion for a flathead Model T. So 100 years ago, when you bought a Model T, you took the, the standard OEM original equipment, cylinder head off, it was a flathead. 
you bought a Rajo head, you bolted it on, and it doubled the horsepower. So I have the last Rajo cylinder head on an inline six Chevrolet. My blueprints at home are dated from 1950, and he died four months later. Uh, my father drove it all through the 50s, and sometime in the early 60s, put it behind my parents' drugstore in Racine, where I grew up. And sometime later, unknown, I don't know, days, weeks, months later, my older sisters got it out, painted it with their boyfriends, hot rotted it for I don't know how long, put it back behind the drugstore. My parents gave it to me in 1970. So I've owned a car now for 45 years. Very nice. Again, a great uh, history about this car as well. Um, do you take it to other car shows? I take it uh, about as far south as uh, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. I'll go over to Detroit for the Woodward Dream Cruise. I'll take it up to Minnesota, up to the back to the 50s. Uh, I take it everywhere I can go. I go to uh, a choice I've got every weekend, every Saturday, every Sunday, two, three, four, five car shows. I just take it everywhere I can. Well, this is an excellent event. you got an excellent vehicle here today, and thank you so much for talking with us. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. All right, welcome back. And in the studio tonight, we have the executive director of Downtown Kenosha, Mr. Chris Nauman. <laughs> Chris, nice to see you today. Um, big things happening downtown, but mm -hmm. before that, uh, let's hear about what's your role as executive director of Downtown Kenosha. Well, thank you for having me, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And I'll tell you what, uh, there are some amazing things going on in downtown. But my role as, ex as executive director is really one uh, that helps coordinate a lot of these things. It's not necessarily my role to, to uh, do the heavy lifting as much as it is to inspire the people around me to do some of the lifting on projects in terms of volunteers and stakeholders and really ensure that all the different parties are working in tandem to create a kind of the goals that we have in mind. Um, now you're from the Green Bay area before you came here? Yeah, yeah I was originally born and raised in the Green Bay area. Um, I went to school in the Milwaukee area for both undergraduate and graduate studies in architecture and urban planning. Mm -hmm. I spent about eight or nine years in the Minneapolis market as a practicing architect and planner. Uh, led me back to Green Bay uh, in 2010, uh, where I worked for the last five years as their executive director for a program called On Broadway Incorporated, mm -hmm. which is kind of a, a downtown development group just in, the, in a historic district. Um, that opened the door to, to bring me down here in January, December, January, where I'm now the executive director for, uh, for Downtown Kenosha Incorporated. So when you walked down the streets of Downtown Kenosha, what was your first impression? Well, when I first came down here, I really didn't know much about the community. You know, I drove through, obviously, on the interstate many times. But when I came downtown, I was really taken aback by the beauty of the city right on the waterfront. And, and what really caught my eye was the vibrancy. Um, a lot of Main Street communities, particularly those who are uh, coming from a depressed period in time for their downtown, really don't have the same level of vibrancy that you already have on the street. So mixed with the uh, historic building stock uh, that I, de I identified when I was visiting, I saw tremendous potential here and that was really attractive. Uh, how many businesses would you say is that downtown? Um, by my last count, very rough count, and depends on how you define your downtown yeah. boundaries, we're right around 300 businesses. Okay. Um, a lot of people don't realize that how dense we are in terms of businesses, but there are a lot of great storefront businesses. There's a lot of, um, our vacancy is really only concentrated in a couple little corridor areas. Overall, we're performing very well downtown with occupancy. Um, there are a few vacant buildings that are larger, but most of the storefronts are filled and most of them are active. Now about those vacancy buildings, it, can the, the uh, local uh, government step in and try and help to get those on vacant or is it mostly up to the, the property owner? Uh, it's a little bit of both, okay. um, particularly the type of properties that we're finding are vacant. Um, it's really focused around the 58th Street corridor and it has to do with the old department store typology. You've got concrete buildings really well constructed that were built probably turn of the century, you know, early, early 20s, mid 20s. These buildings, they're beautiful, first of all, 
but also they're hard to reposition because of the nature of their structure. They're very dense. They're hard. To de you don't want to demolish them. They're cost they cost a lot of money to remove, but they also cost a lot of money to rehabilitate. And we have several department store footprints in the downtown, and everybody knows their names. The Bardens, the J.C. Pennies, uh, the Garbs, you know, those, the, the Kreskies. Those are the buildings that at one point were very successful department stores, but today, based on retail trending, they've been vacant for some time. But we are looking to reposition them as new uses, and that's kind of where our challenge is. Let's uh, talk about some new businesses uh, that, mm -hmm. that open. Uh, I know there's a few that, that if we could talk about. Sure. Just since the beginning of the year, we've seen a number of new businesses. We've seen business growth. So uh, let's talk about the existing businesses that have grown first. You've got, um, I'll use two examples right out of the gate, uh, Elsa May's Pies, a Cannery and Pies. They moved to a different location in downtown, and they actually quadrupled their store size. They've been so successful, and they are the, they are the quintessential success story. They started out mom, pa, as, as a market vendor at Harbor Market. They expanded into a storefront. They found so much success. Now they've expanded their storefront to have larger production. So that is a fantastic story and a great tenant in business in downtown. Uh, Sandy's Popper, same kind of deal. They sell ice cream and popcorn. They work the Harbor Market. They work that seasonal crowd. They've done so well, they were able to expand and double the size of their business just recently. Um, from a new business perspective, we've got some new, new, new players as well. Um, Top Dog Gaming, which opened this spring, it's a video game lounge of all things. Um, a place you can go play the latest technology. Uh, you pay by the hour. It's a really a cool concept and really doing well. Um, we also see concepts like Thirst Edition, which is a new, uh, a new bookstore uh, slash coffee shop up in the Harborside area. Um, kind of hitting that early morning crowd, 5 a.m. crowd, um, giving them an option into downtown when nothing else is really open. It also has some great spaces for uh, playing games, meeting friends, social activities. So that's a really unique concept. Um, we've seen um, the, the Rutger House uh, K9 training area, which is actually a nonprofit business, but they train, uh, they train German shepherds. So they rescue and help train German shepherds for use in uh, high-end service dogs, for instance, for the police, for the military. So the type of service dogs that are really working, working animals, and they're really fantastic. So they're a, they're a new tenant in our downtown. Yeah. So we've got some very exciting things as well with, uh, with a new business about to open called The Buzz. And it's right next to Sazzy Bees. It's an extension of their business. And they're going to have uh, wine and coffee and a deli. Uh, breakfast items and then in the evening because it's connected to the restaurant it'll be overflow for their space so you see some expansion and new business kind of at work there as well so lots of new things going on and if you haven't been downtown in the last let's say six or seven months you're missing out I mean even chicken Mike's chicken and donuts yeah. which you know everybody's everybody's kind of raving about this is something that's only been open since March uh, but they've been really con a high contributor to the traffic downtown uh, let's talk about some new construction too. I've been going down there and mm -hmm. you got scaffolding going up and let's hear about what's going on down. Well, we have a significant building going up uh, called the Fifth Avenue Lofts and it's actually a multi-building complex right on the corner of Fifth Avenue and essentially 58th Street, right by Frank's Diner if you're familiar with that location. And this is a, this is a residential building. Um, it will have uh, the first 60 units which are under construction right now are considered, a percentage of those are considered workforce housing. Um, but the, res the remaining units in that building are going to be uh, market rate housing, so market rate apartments. They have parking on the ground floor, uh, in enclosed garage parking on the ground floor, and then four, four levels of apartments above. They're really beautiful, and they're going to be some of the nicer apartments, believe it or not, in the downtown area to serve this, this, kind, of bolt, this kind of burgeoning uh, apartment uh, culture that we, we're, we're short of right now. Um, so we're very excited about that coming out of the ground. Uh, we've got phase two of that slated to break ground in September. September, oh, we're in September, in October, uh, they're going to try to get in before the frost sets. Uh, but that, those two buildings will be coming online middle to late next year. So that's very exciting from a new construction standpoint. Okay. Um, any update on the Heritage House? Uh, well, absolutely. As you know, the Heritage House is, is kind of a, a really big project for us. And that is a, the old Elks Club. It's a place that I think everyone I've talked to in Kenosha since moving here has said they've got a tie to. They've been there for a wedding or a banquet or they grew up there. They know someone who worked there. Um, it is a, an iconic building that's culturally significant right in the heart of our downtown, highly visible location. This building, unfortunately, has fallen into disrepair in the last 10, 15 years. Um, it, it, it's in pretty sad shape. Um, we are hoping to be able to rescue this building sooner than later. We have a developer at the table who's putting together their, their development plan to turn that building into a boutique hotel. Uh, 80 rooms, 
uh, reopening the pool area, um, adding a, an addition to the side, um, opening up the ballroom again, putting a rooftop bar and deck in. Um, it could be a very awesome signature building for our downtown. We're, at, we're near the finish line on that. We're not quite there yet. As most developments are today, they're very complex from a financing standpoint. You line up all your sources for financing. You try to get them to match up. Something goes away or something changes or timing doesn't work out. You have to reshuffle the deck and try again. And that's kind of what's been happening up to this point. And we're really close to the last pieces of the puzzle, but we're not quite there yet. Okay. Um, Something that makes this all work are the committees. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe you can talk about the different committees that volunteers can co come in and help out uh, downtown. Absolutely. So downtown Kenosha Incorporated really is just me as staff. So I'm the only paid staff person for the entire nonprofit. Everyone else associated with the organization is a volunteer. And that's our board of directors. That's our working committees. Those are the ambassador volunteers you'll see at events. Everyone affiliated with the organization, again, other than me, are volunteers. And that's important because the whole basis of DKI and the, and the Main Street program is about stakeholder engagement, getting people to participate, be engaged, and change their own environment. It's not about one entity coming in and spending a lot of money or one individual or group coming in and ch making all the changes. It's about the community as a whole coming together. Well, one thing that's just, again, seeing the ambassadors out there is these events that go on downtown. If people haven't been downtown Kenosha <laughs> every weekend, at least in the summertime, there is something and well attended. We talk about the downtown car show. We talked mm -hmm. about girl games. We talk about uh, the cheese palooza the 4th of July event. Well, let's, let's hear from your standpoint uh, the events going on downtown. The events downtown are very, uh, I guess, uh, very impressive is the word I'm looking for. So when I, when I was in Green Bay, there were three prominent organizations in the downtown area that ran most all the events. We were one of those, those three organizations. So my organization took care of the farmer's market in Green Bay. We had a food event. We did a winter festival. And we did some kind of weekend promotional items here and there. So we kind of owned those events. And then we worked in tandem with these other groups to do that. Um, here it's a little different. So DKI doesn't own events per se. Um, so I don't have to run events anymore. I don't own them. But there are so many great events that are already in play and that have, have some real institutional history here. Uh, events that have been established for some time with great partners, and we're trying to help promote them. And it's really a huge uh, boost to our downtown. As you said, great crowds. When we have good weather and you have an outdoor event in the summer, you look at the car show as an example. We had 1,150 cars come to that for a one-day event. We had a crowd between that, Cheesapalooza, and the Harbor Market, I'm estimating to be well over 20,000 people circulating between those three events. That is a significant draw. That's a significant number. Those people need places to eat. They need places that they're interested in shopping, they're visitors, they're exploring downtown. They might be interested in living in the area. They might be looking at buildings. Um, to, to have that, that drive, to have that draw that these events bring is tremendous. You look at the Harbor Market, you look at the Cheese Blues of the free uh, cultural events like uh, um, you've got the peanut butter and jam concerts. You've got, um, you know, you've got stuff at the Kemper Center going on all summer. You've got stuff up in Harborside going on. There's just um, endless amount of activities. If someone tells you there's nothing to do in Kenosha, they're not looking very hard because most all these are free events. Mm -hmm. They are fantastic, great talent and showcased, and it's really a fun time. Absolutely. And uh, you just touched on, let's hear a little bit about the State of the Downtown mm -hmm. event coming up. With yeah, that's a, that's a big one for us. So every year, uh, Main Street programs across the state do kind of an annual meeting. And we call them, sometimes they call them State of the Street or State of the Community. We call our State of the Downtown. And this is going to be kind of a late summer, early fall event for us every year. We've done two already. This will be our third event. We're gonna be doing it October 21st at the Women's Club of Kenosha, right off of Library Park. It's a breakfast event starting at 7 a.m. It is open to the public and it is free. Um, the the present, presentation will begin at 7.30 a.m. and go to 9.30 a.m. And it's really geared towards explaining to people um, wh who we are as an organization, our accomplishments of the last year, talk about what's happening in downtown over the last year, and then set the conversation uh, about what's going to be happening over the next year. And in the middle, we kind of have some fun with it. We like to acknowledge our volunteers. 
We want to make sure that people understand that we are a volunteer driven organization and we really do uh, depend on people's time, their treasure and their talent in terms of donations and, and, and volunteering for different things. So in that capacity, the state of the downtown is our platform to carry that message. So if anybody would want more information about downtown Kenosha, is there a website or a phone number? Absolutely. Um, you know, you can, you can I, I probably tell people to go right to the website, okay. um, www.downtownkenosha.org. Org. Um, you can also find us on Facebook, and I think that's a real popular way people are getting a hold of us. Uh, we have a Facebook, uh, general Facebook site, Downtown Kenosha, Inc. Um, you also have, we also have a membership group for volunteers. Uh, you do have to ask for access to that, but once you're in there, that's where we coordinate some of our meeting times and have some discussions internally. But that's where you really get into the volunteer aspect of the organization. Okay. Well, with that, uh, great things going on downtown Kenosha. Downtown Kenosha is an excellent organization to get involved in. Let's give a big round of applause for Chris Thomas for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Okay, here we are at the uh, Midwest Street Machine uh, ca Car Show, and I'm with your name? Dave Wormsky. Dave, uh, what car do we have here today? 48 Anglia. What's so special about this car? Uh, well, it's an English Ford, so they were built in England and then brought over here. Um, this one here, of course, we did more of a 60s design, old drag race style design. Um, it's got some updates, motors updated, runs on E85 fuel, which is sort of a new standard in today's world, you know. Uh, I like the whole kryptonite green. Uh, did you paint it, or what was it? Yeah, we designed it and had it painted that way. It was was the idea of the green. We had to come up with a good name for the green. Uh, is this your only vehicle that you own, uh, classic car? Well, this is one I built for a customer of ours, and uh, no, we we work on a lot of cars, and he owned this particular guy owns several cars. I mean, it's just really. And what, can we talk about the engine? Sure, it's a big block Chevrolet. It's 540 cubic inch. It uh, has special blower and injectors in it and stuff. Uh, you know, it makes substantial horsepower. Is this the first time you've been to this car show? Uh, I had a different car down here last year. It's the first time we've had this car out, you know. Yeah, well, it's definitely eye catching, that's for sure. Yeah. You get a lot of people coming here. Um, and a great event today and uh, terrific weather as well. And thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you. Car show, uh, Midwest Street Machine, and I'm with your name. Debbie Mazzarelli, President of Circle of Hope. Brooke Wamble. Taylor Wamble. Sue Deacon. Marlene Schlecht. Yeah, let's talk about what booth we have today. Today we have a popcorn wagon that we um, raise funds to support women in Kenosha battling breast cancer. 100% of the money stays in Kenosha and helps Kenosha women. Is this a nonprofit organization? Nonprofit organization, and we've been um, active for 10 years. And it's called Circle of Hope. Now, you're at this event. Is there other events that you go to as well? We do. This is the only one we do like this, but we have a quarter auction. Um, what are the other events we have? Uh, well, we have a tackle pink game. We have. Um, oh, well, we don't do. What's the shooting one? <laughs> We have about five or six events, five or six events a year. And then as far as, uh, what do you think of the event today? Um, I really like it, but my favorite part is knowing that the money is all going to breast cancer awareness. I like it a lot. I, I always work here every year, so I think it's really fun to work and knowing that it's going to a good cause. The car show event is great. This event here for Circle of Hope is great. I think the car show is great. And this is a great uh, venue for us to put up this booth. And the support that we're getting from everybody is just wonderful for the survivors. And then if uh, anybody will want more information about Circle of Hope, is there a website or phone number, Facebook? Yes, there is. Circleofhopekenosha.org. Or they can contact... Um, 
De uh, Debbie Mazzarelli at 697-0655. Well, and we also have monthly meetings that meet once a month in my home, um, supporting other women that are going through this also. Great organization. We thank you so much for coming to the car show. It's a great event today. And thanks so much for talking with us today. Thank you. No problem. All right. Okay, here we are at the downtown cruising in downtown Kenosha, and I'm with your name? Jeff Shenning. Jeff, great day today. Uh, how's the event going today? Sir? Beautiful. This is over a thousand cars plus the vans, and it's just awesome. Have you been in this before? Yes, many times. Since the beginning. Yeah. yeah. Well, what struck my eye is this vehicle you have here. Let's hear all about what car do you have here. It's a 1958 Metropolitan. It's an AMC, but it is a Metropolitan built in England, and American Motors imported it. One of the first imports. Now, what's so special about this car? This particular one is believed to be a 10,000 mile original car with one repaint and uh, it's just pretty rust free and it's just, uh, it gets more smiles per mile than any other car that I've ever had. And it's a convertible yes. too? And, yes. Uh, yeah, just in uh, the chrome, that's another thing you don't see that on cars today. Right, yeah. It's got all the, the big boy uh, horn and the big boy chrome and just the little car features. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how long have you had it? This particular one since the spring, but I've had a number of them over the years. And uh, but this is uh, it's a great driver, and uh, it got 35 to 40 miles a gallon when it came back out, and with 50 to 55 miles an hour. So yeah. And uh, is this the only vehicle you have, or do you collect other ones? I've got uh, I've got a 1969 Rambler Scrambler, and uh, 83 uh, Eagle, uh, 83 Eagle wood grain, and then a couple others and stuff. So yeah. 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 Well, great weather out here in downtown Kenosha. Excellent uh, car you have, and thank you so much for telling us. Thank today. you. <laughs>